Welcome to using program supports to retain participants in the National Diabetes Prevention Program, Lifestyle Change Program, Lessons Learned from a Case Study. So today, we're pleased to share findings from a case study that we completed in 2021 to learn more about how CDC recognized organizations use program supports to retain participants in the National Diabetes Prevention Program or National DPP Lifestyle Change Program. During today's webinar, we'll introduce CDC's key effort to scale the national DPP in areas that are underserved. We'll briefly discuss the partners in that effort and provide an overview of the evaluation framework for the project. Along with some of our partners on the line today, we'll present a key case study we conducted in 2021, implementing program supports to retain participants from populations of focus in the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program. We'll also share approaches from organizations that used various types of program supports, sometimes called incentives, to help reinforce information in the program curriculum, remove barriers to participation, address social determinants of health, and promote social support. So while the national DPP has grown across the nation, particularly since the approval of virtual delivery, there are still many areas with little or no access to in-person national DPP lifestyle change programs. Additionally, some populations have been under enrolling in the program relative to their disease burden and risk factors. Through a project called Scaling the National Diabetes Prevention Program in Underserved Areas, or DP171705, CDC's Division of Diabetes Translation funds 10 national organizations with affiliate delivery sites in at least three states to further build the national DPP infrastructure in underserved areas and increase the availability of the evidence-based lifestyle change program for adults with prediabetes or at high risk for type 2 diabetes, with a particular focus on certain populations. The populations of focus for this work include Medicare beneficiaries, men, African American, Asian American, Hispanic, American Indian, Alaska Native, and Pacific Islander persons, and non-institutionalized people with visual impairments or physical disabilities. Since 2017, these national organizations have worked with their affiliate delivery sites to carry out strategies to expand the reach of the national DPP. Strategies to support this expansion include increasing the availability of CDC-recognized organizations in underserved areas, increasing clinician screening, detection, and referral of adults with prediabetes or at high risk for type 2 diabetes to CDC-recognized organizations, increasing awareness of prediabetes and enrollment in the Lifestyle Change Program, increasing retention rates for participants in the Lifestyle Change Program, and increasing benefit coverage for participation in the Lifestyle Change Program. The awardees for this work include the American Diabetes Association, the American Pharmacists Association Foundation, Association of Asian Pacific Community Health Organizations, Association of Diabetes Care and Education Specialists, Black Women's Health Imperative, Comagine Health, National Alliance for Hispanic Health, National Association of Chronic Disease Directors, the Balm and Gilead, and Trinity Health. For more information about DP 171705, please visit the CDC website listed there at the bottom of the slide. So as part of this CDC project, we are conducting a national evaluation. The main purpose of the national evaluation is to systematically collect data each year to assess the extent to which awardees and their affiliate delivery sites, which are defined as CDC recognized organizations, implement the required strategies indicated in the project notice of funding opportunity. The national evaluation has four components. DPRP reporting per each CDC recognized organization, performance measures, quantitative evaluation through grantee and site level annual surveys, and then a qualitative evaluation through case studies and focus groups. For today's presentation, we'll be sharing information and findings from a case study done as part of the qualitative evaluation component for this project. The purpose of the qualitative case studies is to provide an in-depth evaluation of promising strategies related to recruitment, enrollment, and retention of populations of focus in areas that are underserved. We conduct key informant interviews with staff at the recipient, 
affiliate delivery site, and or partner level, and in-depth interviews with program participants as well. So without further ado, I will now turn it over to present the findings on the case study. Before we begin, I would like to provide some background and context on program supports. Then we'll cover the purpose of this case study and our methodology. For the purpose of this project, program supports were defined as supports that were directly related to and supplemented the Lifestyle Change Program, removed barriers to participation, addressed social determinants of health, or promoted social support and connectedness. Supports that supplement and enhance the Lifestyle Change Program curriculum include items such as measuring cups and spoons, water bottles and exercise bands, as well as activities such as cooking demonstrations and group wellness activities. Supports that remove barriers that would otherwise prevent participants from attending classes include transportation vouchers, flexible scheduling to accommodate participants in the workforce, internet hotspots and mobile devices, and prepaid phone minutes and data. Supports that address the many social determinants that impact health include access to healthy foods by providing fruit and vegetable boxes or grocery store gift cards, and referrals to services or resources such as utility assistance programs or behavioral health programs. Supports that promote developing a positive and encouraging relationship between the lifestyle coach and participants, as well as between participants, include frequent one-on-one -on -one check-ins and personalized coaching by the lifestyle coach, and opportunities for sharing and connection between participants and the lifestyle coach, which can be done using private social media groups. So given the background and context on program supports that I just shared, the purpose of this case study was to describe how program supports are being used to increase retention of populations of focus in the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program and to understand the perceived effectiveness of program supports by identifying facilitators, barriers, and lessons learned in this work. To gather data for this case study, between May and June 2021, we conducted interviews at the recipient, affiliate site, and program participant levels. All interviews were conducted virtually as data collection happened during the COVID-19 public health emergency and travel was not possible. At the recipient level, we conducted interviews with representatives from the Association of Asian Pacific Community Health Organizations, or APCHO, the Association of Diabetes Care and Education Specialists, or ADCES, and Comagine Health. We also conducted interviews with representatives from six affiliate sites. And those sites are located in Arkansas, Oregon, the Federated States of Micronesia, Texas, Utah, and Washington. And lastly, we conducted interviews with program participants from one of APCHO's affiliate sites located in Arkansas, two of ADCES's affiliate sites located in Texas and Washington, and two of the Comagine Health affiliate sites located in Oregon and Utah. As we present the approach these recipients use to provide program supports, you may notice some repetition. This may speak to the usefulness of the approaches, and you may want to consider trying them at your organization if they are relevant. Now I'm going to share APCHO's overall approach to using program supports for the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program. APCHO provided hands-on support and guidance from subject matter experts to help affiliate sites plan for and provide meaningful and engaging program supports. This included one-on-one -on -one calls with affiliate sites to answer questions and work through challenges, as well as provide directed training and supports, peer sharing forums where affiliate sites could share successes and challenges to learn from and support one another, and trainings to build capacity on how to identify and implement appropriate program supports. APCHO also used a value-based payment model to support the affiliate sites in covering the real costs associated with removing barriers and addressing social determinants of health. Using a value-based payment model helped the affiliate sites with long-range planning and budgeting. When identifying the types of program supports to use, APCHO and its affiliate sites considered their community and cultural context, their knowledge of community members' needs, and lessons learned from other health promotion programs or grants within their organizations. The affiliate sites provide a range of program supports, such as materials to supplement and enhance the lifestyle change program curriculum, including measuring cups, water bottles, cooking demonstrations, and opportunities for physical activity. Program supports that reduce barriers to participation, such as telephone coupons to access virtual sessions and boat taxi fare, as well as program supports that address social determinants of health. 
And these included home garden supplies, fruit and vegetable boxes, and assistance with replacing immigration and identification documents, including I-94 passports and driver's licenses. They also promoted social support and connectedness between the participants and lifestyle coaches by creating private social media groups where participants and coaches could connect and share with one another, as well as sponsoring family events where participants and families could come together in person. A brief note on in-person events. Some of these activities were implemented before the pandemic, while others that occurred during the pandemic were done safely. ADCES provided training, hands-on support, and guidance to assist its affiliate sites in planning for and providing meaningful and engaging program supports. This included one-on-one -on -one calls with affiliate sites that focused on strategic planning and quality improvement practices and building and sustaining partnerships, site-specific data dashboards to help affiliate sites strategically track recruitment and retention, communities of practice where affiliate sites could learn from one another's experiences, successes, and challenges, and connections with national slash regional partners and subject matter experts who could support affiliate sites in identifying and meeting the needs of specific populations slash communities. ADCES also provided weight scales and other program supports without which participants might have faced a barrier to participation. ADCES and its affiliate sites used various methods to identify the types of support program supports to use. They did needs assessments and participant surveys to better understand participants' needs and their resources available to them, such as internet access and level of comfort with technology. They determined their budget for purchasing program supports, which included other grants and in-kind resources. They also use their knowledge of the community to identify the types of program supports that would resonate with their participants, reduce barriers to participation, and help to address social determinants of health. The affiliate sites provided a variety of program supports. To supplement and enhance the lifestyle change program curriculum, they provided measuring cups, portion plates, cooking demonstrations, and group fitness activities such as dance aerobics. They also provided program supports that reduced barriers to participation, including internet hotspots, tablets, prepaid phone minutes and data plans, and weight scales. To address social determinants of health, the affiliate sites provided fruit and vegetable boxes, grocery store gift cards, a food RX program, and referrals to needed supports such as behavioral health. They also promoted social support and connectedness between the participants and lifestyle coaches through weekly check-ins with a lifestyle coach, telephone coaching, and facilitating connections between participants in similar situations. Now we'll share Comagine Health's overall approach to using program supports for the National DPP Lifestyle Change Program. In its role as a thought partner with its, with its affiliate sites, Comagine Health provided hands-on support and in-person visits, pre-public health emergency, helped to leverage resources and partners, and supported affiliate sites with strategic planning and implementation. Some examples of the support provided included one-on-one -on -one calls with affiliate sites that focused on strategic planning and troubleshooting, assistance with quality improvement practices, for example, using enrollment and retention data by subgroups to identify program support practices that are working and those that aren't, connections to national and regional partners and subject matter experts who can support affiliate sites in identifying and meeting the needs of specific populations and communities, and sharing of emerging and best practices information from the field with affiliate sites. Comagine Health also covered the costs of for needed program supports, such as tablets that would have been a financial barrier for the affiliate sites, and hosted an intensive boot camp customized for their affiliates and led by the Diabetes Training and Technical Assistance Center at Emory University, or DTAC, a training entity that has a memorandum of understanding with CDC to provide training for national DPP lifestyle coaches. When identifying the types of program supports to use, Comagine Health and its affiliate sites considered their knowledge of the communities, any known participant needs such as computer tablets or printed materials for older participants to support virtual cohorts, strategic planning processes, and their experience with and lessons learned from other programs. The affiliate sites provided a variety of program supports, including materials to supplement and enhance the lifestyle change program curriculum, 
such as reusable lunch bags, water bottles, grocery store tours, and group fitness classes like dance aerobics. These program supports that reduce barriers to participation, such as walking shoes, tablets for virtual classes, and flexible scheduling to support participants in the workforce, as well as program supports that address social determinants of health. And these supports included utility assistance, referrals to needed services like behavioral health, and household items such as toilet paper. Eligibility and resource distribution were handled through existing infrastructure at the affiliate site level to increase opportunities for sustainability and reduce additional administrative burden on program staff. The affiliate sites also promoted social support and connectedness between the participants and lifestyle coaches through weekly check-ins with the lifestyle coach and private social media groups where participants and coaches could connect and share with one another. Now we'll go ahead and share the findings from our case study. As a reminder, our findings include facilitators, barriers, and lessons learned in using program supports. APCHO, ADCES, and Comagin Health reported several facilitators to using program supports. They noted the importance of providing one-on-one -on -one training and guidance to support affiliate sites with strategic planning and the use of program supports. They also noted learning from the experiences of other programs about the types of supports that helped engage participants and those that were not effective. APCHO, ADCES, and Comagin Health also emphasized the importance of using a strategic and collaborative approach to planning and implementation of program supports and to problem solve any issues as they arose. They also noted that knowledge of and connectedness to the communities they serve helps them to better understand the barriers to engagement that their participants might face, as well as needs related to social determinants of health, and to use that knowledge to identify program supports to address the barriers and needs. Finally, recipient and affiliate site staff shared that identifying multiple and diverse funding streams that can be used to cover costs related to program supports is very helpful. In terms of barriers related to using program supports, recipient and affiliate site staff from APCHO, ADCES, and Comagin Health shared that limited funding and or restrictions on the use of funding to cover the cost of program supports was a challenge to their planning of and implementation of program supports. They also acknowledge that participant hesitancy to use or access uh, available program supports could be a challenge. For example, some participants, particularly those who were older, were hesitant to make use of available program supports as they did not want to take the resources away from others whom they thought might need them more. Lastly, recipient and affiliate site staff shared that in some communities, engaging partners to help in the planning and implementation of program supports such as by providing resources or materials, was a challenge. For example, for one affiliate site that serves a rural agricultural region, it was a challenge to get buy-in on the value and relevance of the Lifestyle Change Program among the main organizations and businesses in the region. In terms of lessons learned related to implementing program supports, Recipients and affiliate site staff shared insights about the importance of working with program participants to understand their needs, challenges, and interests, and to use that information to inform the planning and use of program supports. Program participants often have competing priorities, including their health, family needs, and work, and program support such as flexible scheduling can help participants navigate these priorities. They also emphasize the importance of using strategic planning and quality improvement practices to plan, implement, and refine the use of program supports over time, and to set clear criteria and guidelines for using program supports. Recipient and affiliate site staff also shared thoughts on the importance of identifying internal partners, such as other programs or departments, that can be leveraged to support participants. This includes learning from the lessons and experiences of these programs about what works to engage and support participants and what does not. And finally, they emphasize the importance of the relationship between lifestyle coaches and participants. Participants value social support and connectedness, and they see this as a vital program support. So for more information on this topic that we're presenting today and others that we've studied through the evaluation of the CDC project, we've developed keys to success tip sheets, emerging practice documents, and webinars 
And you can visit the National DPP Customer Service Center at nationaldppcsc.cdc.gov to access these resources and more. This concludes today's presentation. Today's webinar will be recorded and posted on the National DPP Customer Service Center. Thank you so much for joining us.